What would happen if you put George Michael, Kenny G, Vanilla Ice, and Rick James in a harmony-filled, doo-wop-esque R&B group? You would get the colorful, talented men of Color Me Bad. The early 90s saw the R&B group Color Me Bad as one of the top trendsetters of the time. Along with other groups that swept the 90s off its feet, like Boys to Men, Color Me Bad coined the term hip-hop doo-wop, referring to their style choice and doo-wop feels. With hits like The Forever Smooth, I Wanna Sex You Up, and I Adore Mia Moore, members Mark, Brian, Kevin, and Sam worked hard to seek out anyone willing to put them on. But a good thing didn't last long, and not even a decade into their career as a quartet, the group was obsolete, leaving behind one huge alcoholic, dysfunctional mess. What are the odds that four talented friends cross paths and end up becoming one of the best-selling groups of their time? The odds were more in their favor for Mark, Kevin, Brian, and Sam, who'd go on to make up the ever-suave group Color Me Bad. When Kevin Thornton and Brian Abrams met back in middle school, the two would have never thought that they'd end up in a platinum-selling group together. Same for Sam Waters and Mark Cauldron, who, since childhood, never assumed they'd be placed in a doo-wopping quartet singing half-Spanish melodies. The four amigos would eventually all cross paths in the mid-80s, while at Northwest Class in High School in Oklahoma City. The extracurricular choir would all be their saving grace and the activity that set them up for life. In high school, Brian would be the first to admit he was no Mr. Suave. A self-proclaimed nerd who was more on the overweight side, if Brian Adams wanted to be in a group and possibly sell millions of records worldwide, then he knew he needed to cut back on the snacks, and fast. And did. When word got around that the foursome was going to take this music thing seriously, Brian got into tip-top shape, losing nearly 400 pounds. While on his journey to lose all that blubber, the group had to come up with a group name. First deciding on the name Take One, which was too close to gospel a cappella group Take One, after groupmate Sam came across an article of a horse at a racetrack named, you guessed it, Color Me Bad, Sam got that aha moment and the rest is history. Color Me Bad was officially chosen as the group name and their journey to getting signed was in full effect. They had their name, their looks, and now needed a singing style. Preferring to become a vocal group setting behind the legs of New Edition and New Kids on the Block, Color Me Bad experimented with their sound, performing together in talent shows while being inspired by other groups, like The Four Tops and The Temptations. The positive feedback from their school peers pushed them even more to take this whole singing thing seriously, and soon enough they'd come up with a plan to audition for any and every big-named artist who'd come to Oklahoma City. Talk about being confident. When Cool and the Gang came to town, this was their moment, and they weren't about to let it slip through the cracks. In May of 1987, they'd gotten the opportunity to meet Robert Bell from Cool and the Gang and sang a cappella for him right then and there. Rob liked what he was hearing and introduced the guys to his road manager, Adil Bayan, who would go on to become the group's manager. Although they were just teens, they were eager and hungry, and when Adil recommended they move to New York, but not before the group got a chance to sing for Huey Lewis in the news, Ronnie Millsap and Sheila E. The guys even got to open for Tony Tony Tone. When groupmate Kevin Thornton spotted John Bon Jovi in a movie theater in 89, he immediately sprung into action, dialed the other guys up, and urged them to get over there pronto. Soon enough, Brian, Mark, and Sam joined him as they waited for John Bon Jovi to exit the theater. They then proceeded to sing the 1961 doo-hop track, Daddy's Home, a cappella style. John was so impressed that he invited them to open for his band the next evening to an audience of about 20,000 people. Eventually, they'd take their manager's advice and jet off to the city that never sleeps in September of that same year. There, Tony Tony Tome was in proximity once again. Good thing, too, as the group helped get Color Me Bad into the ASCAP Music Awards. Now y'all know CMB never shies away from a moment to sing for somebody who could really get them ahead. So when producers Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis were spotted in the building, the four friends walked right on over there and began doing what they do best, sing. Jimmy Jam and Terry advised the boys that by being a multicultural group, they'd be able to broaden their audience and appeal if they were to do a half English, half Spanish song. I Adore Me Amor would be the result of that advice, taken. After executive Cassandra Mills over at Giant Records heard the group sing, she got them a deal immediately, signing them to the label in August 1990. The group was now officially signed and head over heels, and the joy wouldn't stop there. 
Cassandra asked producer Dr. Freeze for a song for the guys to record the new Jack City soundtrack, a track that stand out, similar to Belle Biv DeVoe, Do Me, Say Less. Probably the group's biggest hit to date, I Wanna Sex You Up, would become their debut single. Released in March 1991, I Wanna Sex You Up wasn't supposed to have been a single at all. In fact, it'd been turned down by others, including Keith Sweat, Christopher Williams, and even Belle Biv DeVoe themselves. Sucks for them, because I Wanna Sex You Up went on to become the biggest hit on the soundtrack, peaking at number two on the Billboard Hot 100 and number one on the Hot R&B Hip Hop Songs chart. The song grew in popularity almost instantly, and due to the rise in demand, Giant Records wanted Color Me Bad to put out an album ASAP. They were flown to LA where they recorded their first album in just two to three weeks. CMB, their debut studio album, was released on July 23, 1991, and went on to sell well over six million copies worldwide, making the project certified triple platinum in the States. It spent 77 weeks on the Billboard 200 and eventually peaked at number three. Their follow-up single on the album, I Adore Me More, did what I Wanna Sex You Up couldn't do, reaching number one on the Billboard's Hot 100, and achieved the same fate on the R&B hit in the hip hop charts. Their third single, All For Love, went on to reach number one as well, with their fourth single, Think Back, peaking at number 16 and Slow Motion at number 18. It was beyond evident that Color Me Bad was fresh out the gate and had already solidified themselves as a staple within R&B's archives. They went on to win the Best R&B Soul Single, as well as the R&B Soul Song of the Year in a group, band, or duo for I Wanna Sex You Up at the 6th Annual Soul Train Music Awards. They were nominated for Best New Artist and Best R&B Performance at the Grammys and Favorite Soul R&B Single at the 1992 American Music Awards for I Wanna Sex You Up and nominated for I Adore Me and More. Opening for acts like Paula Abdul was their next move, as well as performing during halftime at the Super Bowl in 1992, and cameo appearances in shows like Beverly Hills 90210. That year, they'd set their focus on remixes. Remixing their remix album, Young, Gifted, and Bad, The Remixes, which contained the single Forever Love, which went on to reach number 15 on the Hot 100. By the time their second album, Time and Chance, came about, the group switched gears in musical style. Producers like DJ Pooh and David Foster took the driver's seat, giving the album a soulful, funky feel compared to their first. However, at the time, the music industry as a whole was changing. The 90s grunge era was now in, as well as the yin to its yang, West Coast hip hop. Color Me Bad just couldn't find their footing any longer, and the group began losing momentum because of it. Time and Change peaked at number 56 on Billboard's Hot 200, but saw an increase in numbers when West Coast icon Ice Cube hopped on board to direct the group's music video for their lead single, Time and Chance. The song peaked at number 23 on the Hot 100, with their follow-up doing the same. By the time their third album rolled around, despite having an all-star team of producers like Babyface and artists like John B. and Boyz II Men working on the album, it was apparent that Color Me Bad just wasn't in demand like they once were. Their single, Now and Forever, spent 14 weeks on the charts at number 113 on Billboard's Hot 200. But despite that, it'd go platinum, reaching number one in Japan. It only produced one hit, The Earth, The Sun, The Rain, and due to this album being less in demand compared to their previous, Color Me Bad were eventually released from their contract with Giant. Now signed to Epic Records, the creative control was fully controlled by the label, who chose Remember When as the debut single on their fourth album. The guys hated it. Perhaps for good reason, because the song wasn't all that hot, despite peaking at number 48 on the Hot 100. It'd be around this time that the group were experiencing turbulence, and alcohol would enter and destroy the chat. Kevin Thornton was the first to leave the group. Him and his braided bob preferred a life of ministry and marriage versus singing songs he had no interest in singing anymore. He also became a youth pastor, worship leader, and released a blend of gospel, soul, and hip-hop album in 2008. Sam Waters followed suit, continuing on as a songwriter and producer for the likes of Jessica Simpson, Celine Dion, Fantasia, Kelly Clarkson, and more, leaving only Mark and Brian as remaining members. Nobody wanted to see just a duo, so the group soon disbanded and Color Me Bad was Color Me Done. Brian went on to release solo albums of his own and co-starred in VH1's reality show, Mission Man Band. A full circle moment appeared in 2010 
and he wrote and sang lead for three songs for Cool and the Gang. Mark went on to marry and have children. In recent years, the group attempted to get back together, this time as a trio, with only Brian, Mark, and Kevin. But not even that would last long due to Brian's excessive drinking problem. Their song, Skywalkin', was released in June of 2013 and was the group's latest release in over 20 years. But just months after the drop, Brian would announce his departure. Brian was soon replaced by fill-in Martin Kember, who performed with them at the 2014 BET Awards. 2015 would be the year Kevin left the group yet again. 2018, Brian would be arrested for assaulting Mark on stage in front of an audience during a performance after he drunkenly walked across the stage nearing the end of I Wanna Sex You Up, pushing Mark harshly to the floor while allegedly proclaiming, I'm MFing Color Me Bad. And if you're wondering why he wasn't on stage performing with Mark, it's because Brian had walked off stage abruptly earlier on in the set. That would be the last time Mark would speak to Brian outside of the stage. Their next union would be an appearance on the Dr. Phil show, where he, Brian, and Brian's wife Kim discussed Brian's alcohol addiction. They filmed the show separately due to the restraining order Mark placed against Brian after the shoving incident. Not too long after Brian stated his permanent departure from Color Me Bad, leaving Mark as the last standing OG member. The time Color Me Bad had in the spotlight may not have been as long as they wanted, but the impact they left was more than enough. They helped usher in a new wave of doo-wop harmony group singing and invented an entirely new phase of hip-hop doo-wop. Among the first to have a major success as a diverse group, Mark being of Mexican-American descent, Brian half Native American, and Kevin Black, they were fortunate enough to hit the vocal jackpot along with the right people who'd enter their lives at the right moment. Their ultimate ending may not have been ideal, but their music will forever be just as iconic as their hair and Brian's goatee. Were you a fan of Color Me Bad? Let us know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments and stay tuned for more true celebrity stories.